back, everybody, to another Sport of Bowling show. My name is Mike Flanagan. I'll be your host here today. Today is Tuesday, December the 20th. Happy holidays to all of you out there. And if you haven't got your Christmas shopping done, well, you might want to get to it. Today, we're going to get to a very special show as we are going to recap the calendar year of 2022 in bowling. And to do that today, I've got a couple of great guests who you've seen all throughout USBC Communications and on Bowl TV. So let's get started. Let's bring in our first guest. He's on our show every week, and he is down in Arlington at the Bull TV studios, Jason Thomas. Hello, Jason. How are you? Hello. How are you, Mike? I'm doing good. I've got most of my Christmas shopping done, so I feel pretty good. Well, I, I'll tell you a quick story. I was doing mine this weekend, and I ordered a bunch of shirts on a website called InsideBowling.com, and... I, I, you know, fair, fairly significant number of shirts. And about five minutes after I ordered it, I get a, an email saying I got a refund for part of the uh, part of the cost of the shirts, which I really appreciate because it came from you. I'm not saying that's what everybody who shops at InsideBowling.com will get, but I, I will say there are a lot of really awesome shirts on there if you love bowling. I wanted to buy the whole uh, whole inventory. Well, that was very nice of you to give me that plug to start the show. This is the most important uh, start of the show. So thank you for that. And we do have coupons all over the place. But let's, <laughs> let's just turn that page right now because there's also some amazing stuff available at the USB-C merch store as well that can be found on bowl.com. So make sure you check that one out as well, uh, JT. Thanks for the friend discount. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so today we're, we're here. We're going to kind of talk about some of the big stories that happened uh, in 2022 and kind of look forward to what's going to be happening here in 2023. And I'll tell you what, it's been a pretty action-packed year just in general uh, for bowling. It seems like there were events all the time and we've seen a lot of media exposure as well uh, in bowling, a, a very changing landscape in 2022, but mostly for the good. Yeah, no, there, it was a, a great year. Um, again, there were, like like you said uh, at the top there, you know, a lot of different types of stories, you know, a, lot, a great P PWBA season, a great PBA season. Obviously, the news that just came uh, recently that the PBA is going to be on Bull TV next year was fantastic. But a lot of other great things, too, you know, celebrity competitions, some some unusual stories and then just all of the great, you know, stories we hear every year just from the, the bowling community. So it was really, really an awesome year, like you said, Mike. Well, you you covered a lot of a lot of bowling this year, a lot of days on the road, and for me, it was one of my most action packed years as well for for days on the road, as I got to cover a lot of the different tours. But I feel like to be able to properly talk about the year, we need to bring in one more person here today, who is the voice of the PWBA tour and one of our colleagues and teammates. So let's bring in from Las Vegas. He's handling the collegiate shootout on Bowl TV and was able to step away for a little bit. Let's bring in Emil Williams Jr. I don't know what kind of show you guys are running, but clearly there's a there's some deals going on that I'm not. <laughs> email wants the deal, Mike. <laughs> oh, so Sorry. I, obviously, I need to send an email to Mike uh, and, and see see what what I can do. Obviously, there are some coupons. I, I know. You guys do good <laughs> and I know some, uh, but I, I enjoy a, a nice email in return as well. Uh, but, but good to good to see you guys. Good to be on the show. Um, and uh, good to kind of put a, a bow, if you will. It is that season on 2022. Emil, you're in, in Las Vegas right now. Uh, you've been out there for a couple of days handling the, the collegiate events out there on Bowl TV. What's the action been like? Uh, I mean, it's been fun, uh, exciting. Um, anytime you come to Las Vegas, you guys have been obviously here multiple times, especially South Point uh, in the plaza. It just presents a different feel to any event uh, that is ongoing inside. Uh, and when you talk about collegiate bowling and you get, um, you know, more than, I think, 100 plus teams across uh, the men and women's divisions, uh, multiple events too, the Glenn Carlson Las Vegas Invitational and uh, the collegiate shootout, two of the most kind of sought after and, and look forward to events, I think, on most calendars for uh, collegiate teams. So anytime you get to December around holiday season, you know, you're if you have the opportunity to go to Las Vegas, uh, you take it. And I uh, hope the strikes will follow. We've seen plenty of strikes. Uh, some of the the uh, common teams that you've heard of, Weber, uh, Wichita State, but uh, you know, early lookout uh, for for March and April. Uh, don't sleep on Oklahoma Christian uh, in 2023. Okay. Oh, you, you heard it here first, Oklahoma Christian, folks. That's that's a college I hadn't really heard of. So um, 
good luck to them. And, and I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind for sure. So as we go around guys, we're going to cover some of the, some of the top stories of the year and just kind of round table it a little bit. Uh, and we, we, we sent out a few stories uh, to each other ahead of time. So uh, top five stories and honorable mentions here today. We're going to talk about just things that stood out to us. Of course, all of you at home have your own uh, stories that stood out. And I know there were a lot of them uh, throughout the world in bowling. But JT, let's kick things off with you. What story stood out to you as one of them you wanted to mention here today? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to skip by the, the PBA and PWBA stories because we'll get to those in a minute. But to me, uh, one of the big ones, and I think this is such a huge sign that you know, things are changing and that the world will at, at some point understand what we all understand as bowlers, that bowling is an awesome and cool thing to do, uh, is the Jimmy Allen uh, Celebrity Tournament, which, you know, the PBA uh, put together, you know, very quickly and got up there on, on Fox and it was an incredible show. And I just feel like watching somebody like Jimmy who just loves bowling and, you know, who is talking about bowling, you know, whether he's on Fox or not, is, is such a huge asset to have uh, for the sport because he's going to be, you know, our conduit to showing the rest of the world how great bowling is uh, to those folks that don't already understand it like we do. So to me, that was that was a huge uh, just kind of first step towards uh, making that happen. And I know, you know, the PBA and others, other celebrities have done a lot in the past to uh, involve bowling, whether it's just you know, a fundraiser that nobody really sees or, you know, something like the Chris Paul celebrity shoot uh, tournament that's been going on for, you know, over a decade. Uh, but all of those things are, are really great for helping bowling and, you know, Jimmy stepping up in the PBA, uh, giving it the visibility that it deserved, I think was, was a huge story. Yeah, I would agree. And, and the one thing that, that, that I think, and, and Emil, I know you've seen this as well, you know, we, we all follow Jimmy Allen on social media. And a lot of times we see someone come into bowling and, and we see him dabble in bowling, mm -hmm. but he is all in, in bowling right now. He, he's constantly updating his Instagram and, and all of his social media, he's out throwing equipment, he's out trying new balls. So he'll, he'll be on Instagram one day with Carrie Underwood backstage performing on tour with her. And then the next day he's in a bowling center bowling and showing his love for bowling. So he is all in, in bowling right now. Uh, Emil, what are your thoughts on uh, on Jimmy Allen's, uh, you know, introduction to bowling and, and really championing bowling this year? Well, for me, uh, you know, from a personal perspective, it's kind of two things. One, um, as an African-American, as black man, it's nice to see and still see that that representation from a different standpoint. Uh, so someone from outside of the bowling world, specifically uh, music and country music. Um, uh, and that's kind of the two in one right there. Uh, he's he's conquering country music and then now the ability to bring uh, his presence and uh, his viewership, his audience, uh, his followers into the, the great sport of bowling that we all know uh, is really a two for one for me uh, on the plus side. You know, Chris Paul obviously has been uh, excellent in regards to helping showcase bowling uh, from a celebrity perspective and adding, um, you know, PBA, PWA stars. Uh, Gigi has been involved. Uh, as well. So from the representation perspective, for me personally, uh, I'm, I'm super thrilled to see uh, Jimmy and I'm looking forward to being able to support, you know, obviously, uh, and I'm not a country music fan, but, you know, if I see somebody supporting something I love, I will, I will definitely support them uh, on the flip side as well. So, you know, you know, I might have to switch it up on Bull TV, maybe throw in a few country music tunes uh, that people wouldn't normally hear me talk about or sing. Um, uh, and Mike, you know, I know you do your, your thing too. You dabble, you know, the duet thing may happen. It may not, uh, but shout out to Jimmy Allen and what he's been doing. That is awesome. Emil, you know, I hadn't really, hadn't really thought about it from that perspective, but you're absolutely right. And one other thing, as I heard you talking there, you know, we've seen a lot of the folks that, that give bowling publicity are, are athletes, right? And during the season, they're very focused on you know the team atmosphere and no distractions right just like whenever we somebody see somebody on a telecast right in bowling is you want to make sure that you're you're constantly in the game and focused and there's no distractions because you don't want an excuse to to not show up but in, in in music even though you have to go out and you have to gear yourself up you have to do your vocal training you have to get ready to go out night in and night out they are performing and entertaining and it's a little bit more laid back so maybe that's why we're seeing jimmy allen 
able to do more with bowling, like in between tour days and things like that, because he doesn't have to use his voice. It's not like he's going to alter anything uh, or hurt anything when he comes to going out and performing out on stage. So uh, I agree. I think it's been a, a really solid year uh, in bowling with uh, getting more eyeballs on bowling. Uh, all the way around. So, Emil, uh, why don't you uh, bring up uh, maybe something that stood out to you this year? Yeah, and you know, something that we all know a little bit about uh, from a media perspective, uh, and specifically YouTube, uh, and to see what Darren Tang has been able to uh, create, produce, and, and uh, what I feel like has been a, a relatively short amount of time. Uh, he's eclipsed the 100,000 uh, subscriber mark on uh, on YouTube. I think the number is somewhere around 113,000 um, as we currently uh, talk about it. Uh, for me, I love Darren Tang first and foremost. Every time we talk and conversate, uh, he's been nothing but gracious with his time. Uh, and we chat and, excuse me, discuss bowling. But um, I, I love specifically what he does with the channel involving league bowling. And you know, we all have bold league. Some of us still bold league, et cetera, and so forth. And those of you watching and listening to this, uh, obviously bold league. And so, you know, Darren has made a, a really cool way to incorporate what he does for a living uh, and then kind of showcases it also uh, in a league setting. You know, so you get to you get a chance to see your some of your favorite professionals in Darren Tang, but also uh, kind of the laid back feel of league, if you will, as well, while he's you know, talking a little bit and having some special guests and, you know, seeing some honor scores being shot by others within the league and super sub shout out to Ari Wilson. Um, so what he's doing in that regard, um, you know, shorts, ball reviews uh, and everything else. Um, and, and not just him. There, there are tons of channels uh, devoted to bowling, both youth, uh, professional um, and, and everything in between. Um, high level amateur tournaments are being covered um, in, in many different ways and different cases. Uh, and across multiple channels. So it, it's really a great time to consume and absorb bowling uh, from a content perspective, from a media perspective, uh, and maybe something that, you know, from a, if you just look at the, the populace uh, and how many channels and, and, and what's out there, there's so much to watch and, uh, and to learn from uh, as well. So uh, shout out to, to, to D-Tang. Yeah, he's done an excellent job on, on his YouTube channel. And JT, I like to use the example of Dave and Buster's, right? I use it all the time in business when I talk with clients or just when, I, when, I'm, when I'm at dinner with you guys. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about it before. But you had Dave who had a restaurant and you had Buster that had an arcade, right? And they were in the same strip mall and then they busted down the wall and decided to become Dave and Buster's because people would go eat then they'd go play or they would play and then go eat. Right. So when I look at Darren Tang's YouTube channel, the thing that he's been able to do is he's been able to partner with a guy by the name of Jesse, who recently has become a bit of a celebrity in bowling as he bowls as well. But he's a great editor. He was even on the Beef and Barnsey show about a week ago. And, you know, for him to be on the Beef and Barnsey show and talk about editing and all those sorts of things. And he's a very good editor and he, and he really stays in that Dave lane. And then you've got Buster, who's Darren and their partnership has come together. They're the fastest growing YouTube channel in the history of bowling. It took them just over a year to get to 100,000 subs. And to put that in perspective, Brad and Kyle, it took about three years, JT. Yeah, no, I mean, I would have thought five years ago that what they've done, Brad and Kyle and, uh, you know, Packy as well and, and Darren would have been impossible. Um, they are actually making a living at YouTube. And so, you know, if you put together the number of titles that, those four guys have it's I think it's two maybe three so they're not the biggest stars on the PBA tour but yet they're putting out great content every day they're educating people about the sport and they're they're serious about it they treat it like a job even though they're they're really cool and fun and laid back on their channels they are very serious about doing this as as a business and as a job and they've proven to the rest of the world that it can be done so you know big kudos to them for doing it I'm a huge fan. I, I, you know, I don't watch every single video that they put out, but it's certainly on my feed and I watch, you know, I'd say at least four or five a week. Um, so thank you for entertaining me guys, but uh, yeah, keep up the great work. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that happening because it's not only a reflection on them, it's a reflection on our community and our bowling community. And again, to go back to my original point from the first topic, the more we can show in this community that we have this bright light that people want to be a part of, the bigger it's going to get and the more opportunities we're going to have for the sport outside of you know, our normal uh, insular, insulated 
a uh, little little group. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And 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 the demographics out there too, a lot of young people are, are watching as as well. And and it's and it's fun and it's also uh entertainment that that you can that, that's family friendly. You know what I mean? So it's very family friendly content as well. So that uh, absolutely right. So I, I, I guess I'll give, I'm sorry, Mike. I got even one shout out before we move yeah. on for the from the media topic. Um, and we will talk about women's bowling here in a, in a sec too. But um, one of the channels that uh, that people often talk about and comes up a lot. It's actually come up this week because Wichita State, of course, is competing. But Sarah Classen, um, yeah. who competed on the uh, on the PWBA tour this past season, uh, has a YouTube channel as well, and it's also fast growing. Uh, and you know, talks about yeah. A lot she's of, like ten thousand subscribers now already, right? Yeah, and so yeah. I mean, obviously experiences, PWB experiences, you know, real life, you know, expenses. Um, she broke it down on. Uh, yeah, that was a great video. Yeah, I right, right. yeah. You know, the, the real life of hey, this is how many events I, I I entered. You know, this is how much money I made. This is how much it costs. All of those things. So, you now breaking down the real life. So, so shout out to Sarah as well, and Gigi uh, also doing her thing on on YouTube also. A lot of great content out there on YouTube. Absolutely. Uh, Emil, you, you preluded it a little bit. You talked a little bit about uh, PWBA, and I don't think there's anybody that, that knows the PWBA better than, than you do. I know JT knows it well also, but you were out there covering the PWBA tour. And I think the thing for me, before I pass it off to you guys who were out there covering that tour, is, you know, Shannon O'Keefe uh, won two players of the year in a row, and then, and then she didn't win. And, you know, I think there were some doubters out there wondering whether or not she was able, you know, if she was over the hill or if her day had come and gone. And then she comes back and, and, and wins another one, you know, and that's with a couple different ball companies now as well. Uh, but Shannon O'Keefe back on top this year and one of the tightest player races that we've seen, you know, in a, in a long, long time out there. It was a very action packed season, a lot of great performances out there on the PWBA tour. But Shannon O'Keefe bringing it back player of the year. And, you know, it seemed like the Liz Johnson show. And then it was the Shannon O'Keefe show. Then we saw Brianna Cote come in and win a player of the year. And now Shannon's back. I'm really curious what we're going to see in 2023 on the PWBA tour. Mike, it's a, that's such a great question, uh, honestly. And the season itself was, uh, I, I, I mean, and JT will, will chime in too, but it may have been the best overall uh, because I believe the number is 10. Uh, 10 different players won one title. There was only one uh, person who won more than two or uh, a two or more, excuse me. And that was Brianna Cote. Uh, but specifically from the Shannon O'Keefe angle, um, I, 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 A, if there were doubters out there, I'm not sure why you would do that. That would be like doubting Mike in his prime. MJ, I'm talking about Michael Jordan. We're not talking about Braun for all of you who might come at me. Don't add me on tour. I thought you were talking about Mike Flanagan. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not that Mike. Uh, M, MJ. But, but we're talking about, you know, players at the at the height of their powers, if you will. Um, and, and the age perspective is, you know, that's something I asked her about a couple of years ago. And, you know, for her, it's just a number. Um, but the main thing for Shannon this year was was battling through injury, uh, the IT band injury um, and, and all of the rest and rehab and the different things she had to do just to be able to compete uh, on a weekly basis, really on a sometimes on a daily basis. Um, she'd show up to, you know, a, a Friday morning with, you know, heat packs, um, heat wraps and, you know, trying to warm up, you know, and all of those things and do the same things kind of in between uh, as well. So I think the recovery, the rehab and everything that she had to do to bowl at the level that she's accustomed to competing at, um, I think was the biggest hurdle that she had overcome. And, and obviously she did. Um, and Brianna Cote made it as, uh, and Daniel McEwen also made it as difficult as possible for her from a, from the player of the year perspective. So I thought overall with the amount of uh, players who won titles, you know, Brianna Klemmer set records in St. Petersburg, um, broke records as well was on a 900 watch legitimately for, I think it was five to six frames, um, 300, 300, throwing a 289 before that. But the 900, if would have happened, would have counted um, because it would have been in the right games, four, five, and six. There were so many highlights, uh, you know, TV every week. There were a lot of, a lot of great things to, to be celebrated. Uh, from a staff perspective, it was great to, to be back out there certainly as well. Um, long days, but that's what we do uh, and the, the ability to crown champions. Uh, and as many as, as we did uh, was excellent. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything Emil said there. And um, I will add one thing about O'Keefe 
and it is she's like the terminator um you know no matter you know if you cut her legs off she's going to keep coming at you um you just she just doesn't give up and she i think she finished no lower than ninth in any event this whole season and that that's just a testament to her will to succeed even if she doesn't have a great look she still finds a way to fight through it until she can figure something out and then she starts coming at you and the thing that I think keeps her going is, you know, this year she started reading a book every week. I think she read over 50 books uh, this last year. And so, you know, it's, it's an example of, you know, you can read one book and get motivated to do something. But then, you know, after a month, after two months, that, that book wears off and then life starts beating you up and you start to, to slip. And she never lets herself slip. She's always finding new ways to motivate herself. And, you know, if, if, if other people just looked at what she did, not even just bowlers, but like in life, if you just watch Shannon O'Keefe and how she goes about competing on a daily basis, you will become better at anything it is that you want to do in life. So I think she's a great example, uh, but there are a lot of young ones coming after her. You know, yeah. McEwen, she's, she's, she's going to get her player of the year one of these days, and it's going to be soon. And I think when she starts to realize that how good she really is, I think she knows she's really good, but when she starts to believe it, I mean, she could start winning five titles a year. That's how good Danielle McEwen is. And then, you know, you've got players like Brianna Clemmer who can just, the, the, there's, there's never been horsepower like her in any female bowler, maybe Michelle Feldman, but other than her, I mean, when she gets what she likes, I mean, she, she'll average 290 and you can't beat that. <laughs> it's just, it's just ridiculous. And then, really happened. <laughs> you know, if that weren't enough, yeah, you've got Shannon creating a bunch of monsters like Hope Gramley, who's going to come out next year. And I think Hope Gramley, her first year on tour is going to compete for player of the year. I think she's that good. So you've got all these young players and you've got all these players that have just been waiting for their moment. Brianna Cote, who has already had a moment, but she's you know going to be contending for Player of the Year for a long time to come. She's right in the middle of her prime. Um, and then you know you've still got Kelly Kulik out there. You still got Liz Johnson out there. And how much longer can Shannon O'Keefe keep, keep this run going? Yeah, and and, and JT, you mentioned uh, I think Brianna shot uh, Cote specifically shot. I think she shot eight hundred on TV right during one of their one of yeah. her yeah 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 that's true uh, as well. And then. Um, you know, and then Olivia Farwell, who won Rookie of the Year, uh, she too showed signs and glimpses in a very small sample size. Uh, so between her, you know, Hope, obviously, uh, 2023, you know, definitely should be spectacular. And then, you know, Clara had a great season. You know, Dasha was still was still solid. You saw Beer get kind of step into it with a major win uh, as well. I mean, it is it, yeah. this is like the 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 best time I think to be. Not just a fan of bowling, but you know, we're talking about PWBA. Uh, I don't think there's a better time to be a fan of, of professional women's bowling right now. I agree. Well, you, you guys hit on just about everything I was going to talk about, but but the, the the real story for me was Brianna Cote for me because you can see a player have a good year. We've seen it before, and and I don't want to pick on my buddy Andrew Anderson who joined us on last week's show. But he won Player of the Year, and he had a big letdown the, the next year, and he's he's looking to kind of kind of get that back this year. And I do think he's poised for a good season this year, as we talked about. If you missed that show, make sure you check out the last Sport of Bowling show. But I, I thought Brianna this year to follow that up. I mean, I was most most athletes you see a letdown. It's very difficult to win the Super Bowl back to back years as a team, but even as an individual, it's very difficult to follow it up with with a great year and she, she just lost the player of the year. And, and I thought that was the real story. Obviously we all love Shannon. Shannon earned it. She is a powerhouse. She is very, very difficult to beat both mentally and physically on the lanes. And she has all that experience, but to see what Brianna Cote did this year. And then the other one you guys did mention and touch on, I'll touch on it briefly is Danielle McEwen. Yeah. Out there dealing with injury. And I know that mentally that took a big toll on her. And I think you're right, JT. I think, her taking those down and, and out moments and being able to build from that, it's only up from here. And I think you're right. I think she will win player of the year, maybe not in 2023, but sometime down the road for sure. Yeah. All right. 
coming soon. Uh, uh, sorry, Mike, it's definitely coming soon. And then just to piggyback real quick on the on Brianna Cote, um, somehow I think she's still flying under the radar for for some you know strange reason uh, mm-hmm. from a lot of fans I think out there. And, and maybe it's just like her game is just so simple that it it just kind of it, it, it it's not the the wow factor. Uh, if you will. So I think that might lull people to sleep. But if you've been sleeping on, on Brianna Cote, then literally you've been sleeping because you've been missing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and on a sadder note, don't want to get too, uh, too much on it, but re, you know, just lost recently lost two very important people uh, in her life, both of her grandfather. So just want to uh, give some, you know, let her know that we're all thinking about her and uh, wish her family uh, all the best to Cote's and the Caldwell family. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we lost a lot of good ones in 2022 as well. Maybe one day we'll put together an in memoriam for folks that we lost in the bowling world and friends of the bowling world. So shout out to everybody that lost somebody this year as well. Our thoughts are with you. So I brought I mentioned Andrew Anderson. I think this is a great opportunity to talk a little bit about the PBA tour season, which will be if you've been hidden under a rock or, as I like to say, been in jail for the last few months. They've been sleeping uh, back. That's right. Uh, we uh, we now have the PBA tour on Bull TV, which I'm really looking forward to going out and covering that one with you guys. Uh, but this year, you know, it was it was Belmo again, you know, and 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 some people say, oh, that gets old, Belmo, Belmo, Belmo. But what he's doing, you know, there for a while was who's the, who's the greatest bowler of all time, right? And it was it was Earl Walter. Some people would put Pete in there based off of raw raw talent, uh, but now I. I truly believe and it's not just because it's in the now i truly believe that jason belmonte will be the greatest bowler that we have ever seen lace him up on the lanes by the time his career is done but the one guy that i think that we do have uh that could beat belmonte and he is on a trajectory with the stats and the numbers if you were to put these numbers together uh i will go a little nba with you emil for a moment if you look at trey young's numbers he is going to surpass what Kobe Bryant did in his career based off of what he's doing now compared to what Kobe Bryant did in, in his first few years in the league, leading the NBA in assists and points last year. Many people don't realize that, and I don't think many people realize the path that Anthony Simonson is on as well. So you got Belmo Player of the Year, and I think you got Simonson. We have to continue to keep an eye on to see if his trajectory can continue to go up. And I know, JT, when we were talking a little bit ahead of time on this one, you've got some interesting things you'd like to weigh in about Simo as well. Well, yeah, I mean, you nailed it. I mean, Belmo is probably going to be the greatest bowler of all time when all is said and done. Um, you could argue that he already is, you know, with the number of majors that he's got. He's now tied Walter Ray for most players of the year. Uh, but he still has things he wants to accomplish. And Part of what that is, is he knows that whatever his record ends up being when he walks away, Simo's going to come after it. And he wants to set that number so high that Simo has a hard time getting it. And he, he, he part of him, I think, believes Simo will get it no matter what that number is. But I think he wants to make it challenging for him. And, you know, he talks a lot about tennis, you know, what happened with Roger Federer and with Djokovic and with Nadal where you know you had Pete Sampras break this record that everybody thought was unbreakable, and then Federer breaks it. Now all of a sudden you've got three guys who have broken it, and they're all chasing after each other. And so you know that's basically what Belmo's created out on tour by being as great as he's been. He's he's created this group of players, and you know you have to also include EJ Tackett in that in that as well. Um, and then there's some other players that you know still have a lot more work to do. Uh, to get to those numbers, but they certainly have the potential to do it. You know, somebody like a Marshall Kent, who's, you know, got a number of titles, but has the ability to, you know, win multiple majors and majors in bunches if he can just kind of figure out, you know, his own internal belief and, and get there. And I, I know he had some injury issues as well, but I mean, it's, it's, it's very similar to the PWBA and you have all these great young talents who are all feeding off of what Belmo is doing. And so, it's really fun to watch. Um, Simo is just so talented. He's just he's just amazing. I mean, he shot an 1100 set for four at uh, during qual or almost 1100. He it was it came down to like the the ninth and tenth frame of the fourth game. But he bowled an 1100 set basically for four, which is really hard to do. I don't know if anybody out there in the world that's watching has ever bowled 1100 for four, but you got to strike a lot. 
he did it on a day when the, the field average was less than 200. So, I mean, watching him do that was just like, oh, my, I can't believe how incredible this guy is. And then just some of the things he does on the lanes with the backup balls and then he'll play a, a line that you're just like, well, he shouldn't be playing there because Belmo's got a whole lane lofting it. He'll go out and play second arrow and beat everybody. So I just he's just unbelievable at what he does. But it's just super fun to watch two players at that peak of their game go at each other and just push each other. You know, you know, I I think, um, and, you know, and I, I like to make a lot of references to to Michael Jordan because I he's the goat for me across sports, but specifically basketball. And so many of you already heard me talk about this across both TV, but and, and JT just mentioned it as well as far as what Belmo has done and is doing and still is doing and will do. Uh, has has elevated everyone else's game, right? So if you want to compete with Belmo, you, you're forced to, you know, get in the gym, put in the practice time, put in the practice games, uh, sharpen the tools, you know, iron sharpens iron. And that's exactly what Belmo has done with the PBA Tour. And you see, obviously, what Simon has done. So, you know, if you were talking about bowling, to me, if you're if this was a Michael Jordan, LeBron type situation, right, that, that's what you got. I mean, you got uh, Belmo, Simo, you know, Mike and, and LeBron. And, you know, in many cases, obviously, LeBron's going to, going to, to uh, eclipse a lot of, you know, records and already has, you know, points and all those kind of things. But uh, it very well could happen that way for Simo. And, it, and the thing about him is, right, you, you you think about how long he's been on tour and you forget that, like, he's not even 30, which is just the almost like the strangest thing. It's like, wow, he's literally got, you know, a full – you know, I won't call it a lifetime, but, you know, at minimum, you know, give, uh, you know, health and, and everything's good. A minimum, like 20 years left of uh, and, and probably could 15 was hard, strong, you know, still really, really good to great years. I mean, so. Yeah, you know, we put up the poll all the time on Bull TV, like, is Simo going to break down those records? And usually it's like an overwhelming. There's no way. And I always remind people. Simo's already a nice chunk of being on his way to doing it. And he's at an age where Belmo ha hadn't even started on tour yet. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll throw, I'll throw another analogy. He's like Connor McDavid. You know, McDavid came into hockey, you know, so young, you know, and, and he's, you know, killing it. But, yeah, it's, it's obvious that, you know, he's off to, to the best start in the history uh, of, of the PBA. And, and shout out as well. Uh, I think maybe my my favorite show from the PBA this year might have been the double show uh, to see the uh, emotion that came out from Marshall, Kent, and EJ Tackett uh, yeah. together on that show. They bowled together for quite a while, but that was a very emotional show. And and right before the show, also, Commissioner Tom Clark brought out some very special VIP guests, and they paid tribute to the great Mark Roth. So, uh, you know, we lost Mark. And uh, in 2021, right there, right before the end of the season and at the Mark Roth doubles, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. So that was another big one for me. Guys, uh, I do want to also mention uh, going off script here a little bit, but, you know, PBA 50 is also uh, not only on Bull TV in 2022, which was a big story, but also going into 2023. And I think we have to spend a moment to talk about what a cool tour that is. I got to go talk about me turning 50 and going out on PBA 50 and winning a title <laughs> and beating Chris Barnes for the championship. That would be fantastic. I will film it. Is that what I'll we're going to talk it. about? That would I be think, fantastic. <laughs> I, I, Emil, I think you and I might be eligible the same year to go out and bowl that. So that, that'll I be our coming up. That'll be I'm our coming practice. up party. I'm going to practice. I'm going to date you a little bit because I'm a little younger than you. So I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Uh, but, <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm fully on board with that idea. Any senior tour that I can be a part of, those are my current future goals. I love that. So, uh, so th you know, this year was awesome covering those guys. And, and you know, Tom Hess had just come off player of the year, and he came out, you know, guns blazing and, and, and finished in the top three in points. And Chris Barnes was right there again. But the real story was Parker Bone the third to be able to, to win – player of the year at age 58 you know a lot of times the spring chickens the 50 year olds the 51 year olds are the ones that come out and dominate on that tour we've seen it over the years but for parker to have this resurgence at age 58 i think it was because he was fueled by his kids right because they were yeah. winning everything so oh, yeah. so uh but what an incredible year for parker he won five times out on that tour 
Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I think it all started when he saw both of his sons win at junior gold, and then he just went on a tear. And so, I mean, it's Fountain Youth. I actually wrote my Bowler's Journal column, uh, my last one about, about this very thing, you know, about having a fresh young mind, you know, that, that will drive you no matter what you do. And I think working in bowling gives you that. And uh, I made a little joke there about bowling PBA 50 because I – I really do know that, you know, if I did go out and bowl there, it would be much more of a horror show than like one of those <laughs> uh, happy ending movies. But I mean, it, it's it's awesome. It's like the fountain of youth. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm here for it, JT. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Thank you. Know, get the big wheel out there. <laughs> Back out. Um, you know, Mikey obviously had a front row seat uh, to the PBA 50. You know, one thing for me, just kind of watching from afar, and typically every time you were at a PBA 50 event, I was at a PWA event. So I never really got a chance to just kind of sit and watch uh, Bowl TV. But, you know, you, you read, you listen, and, and, and you watch when you can. Uh, and, and, and what Parker did was, was fantastic. Even that week of Junior Gold, he was making the, the run. He was commuting back and forth, making sure he was still – available for Justin, available for Brandon, available for Sydney uh, and everyone else. And then, you know, making the, the trip, you know, back and forth. I don't know how many miles it was uh, overall, but um, and then he goes out and wins. I mean, so it's just like, you know, wow, it was like a, a, a the two for one deal for me again. Like, you know, his dedication to his craft uh, and obviously first and foremost, being a dad uh, and, and being a parent, I thought was uh, excellent on display. Um, and I guess shout out to John Burkett. You know, won his first title, which was uh, just an excellent story, uh, also as well. Uh, and, and reading, you know, what uh, Jill Winters wrote about him in the uh, uh, in Bowler's Journal recently, uh, and understanding his story, and obviously watched him uh, as a major league pitcher was was pretty cool as well. Yeah, it was it was a great story. I, I talked to him the other day, and you know, it meant so much to him to win that title. And again, Fountain of Youth. He was like, I, I was starting to think it wasn't going to happen. Because <laughs> right? it's hard. It's hard to win out there. But, you know, to see his story and see all the time and effort that he's put into it, uh, it makes me think that, you know, I have a chance against Chris Barnes. Yeah, I was going to say, who else? Are Chris, Chris Barnes, obviously. Dino, was it Dino's rookie season out there? Yeah. The 52. I mean, he came out um, and, and put up numbers uh, as well. I mean, I mean, that's just, that's a tour, you know, like as soon as you turn 50, shout out to Tony Franklin because. We had some convos and some laughs too, and uh, uh, you know that he made a run at one of those tournaments. Yeah, like a, it's like almost maybe a, a, a jolt of energy, like you said, JT, the fountain of youth, to where you know you get back out there and you you still get to bowl, and now you get to bowl against the players that either you bowled against in your younger years, obviously, and you you still get to bowl against them in, in many cases. Um, and, you know, I know Tom Hess has not only done it on the lanes, but now he's dabbling in some bold TV stuff, too. Uh, so it's, it's good to see all of that as well. And then one thing regarding uh, kind of bring it back to just the PBA side, I got a chance to cover the Colorado Springs Open, I believe it was this, this past March. Uh, and, and Don Barrett won. And then he went on to win the Triple Crown uh, later uh, in that season. I, and I thought uh, it was good to see Dom, who I always thought was just immensely talented. Uh, kind of get back into the winner's circle uh, as well. And then there are players we didn't even talk about, right? We mentioned DJ Tackett, but Chris Prather, Brad, Kyle, uh, uh, specifically uh, Kyle Sherman, like Kyle Troop, I mean, A.J. Johnson. Uh, I mean, it, the list goes on and on. So uh, as someone obviously who's always been a fan of the PBA, now getting to see it maybe a little bit up, a little further up close, uh, excellent. Definitely looking forward to that in 2023. Yeah, it's all going to be on Bowl TV, and I'm going to throw it out there right now. You you mentioned a collegiate team we need to look out for. I am going to say A.J. Johnson's going to win this year, uh, and it's because of what's happening in his life outside and off the lanes. He's in a really good spot mentally. He's got a great support system. A.J. Johnson's going to win this year, and you'll be able to see it on Bowl TV, everybody, and don't forget Bowl TV is available for $99.95 now through the end of the year, so make sure you get your subscription if you're already subscribed. You'll roll over at the $99.95 price point you want to get it in before the end of the year because it goes up to 119 uh january 1st guys i got one other topic i wanted to bring up um here because it got a lot of play and we know those bowling oddities do get a lot of play and brings a lot of exposure in our sports some would argue that it's not great exposure 
Uh, however, we had either the first or maybe the second. It's still to be determined, as I've seen on social media. I have not had this confirmed. But we actually saw the backwards bowler, uh, Mr. Jim Cripps, uh, bowl a 300 game here. It was a little over a month ago. And uh, it just goes to show all the different unique styles in bowling. As long as you uh, repeat your speed, how you release the ball, um, and then your accuracy, no matter how you do it, you can achieve a great scores, at least on easier conditions, that is, on house shots. Obviously, it's a little bit tougher when you start bowling on sport conditions, bowling on tours, of course, or the Open Championships. But uh, we did have a backwards bowler bowl 300, and it actually got some national – media exposure yeah i mean i think you nailed it mike uh i think we in bowling tend to be sometimes a little snobby uh we can we can uh <laughs> we can <laughs> judge other, yeah yeah judge <laughs> other people's form and style a little too harshly um you know certainly mr belmonte comes to mind somebody who just you know came out of nowhere, you know, Australia, just all of a sudden shows up with this two-handed style and proves that, you know, you know what, you can bowl any way you want and be great at it. As long as, like you said, Mike, you can repeat the shot and do it consistently. And so I think that's a great lesson, uh, Jim Cripps, getting all this attention for bowling uh, because of the way he bowls. I know a lot of people think it's a negative because it's like, okay, well, you know, anybody can bowl a 300, you know, you can, you can have, you know, one foot in the grave and show up and just throw the ball down the lane with with two hands and a foot and bowl a perfect game. It's too easy. And that's what, you know, everybody says. And that's why nobody likes bowling. No, the reason they don't like bowling is they don't know about it. They're just not aware of it. They don't hate it. They don't love it. They just don't know. And a, a person like Jim Cripps who comes along and proves that you can have a great time and also be good at it, doing it any way that you want, makes bowling seem like something people would want to be a part of. And so I think it's a great story. I think it's an important story. I think we as bowlers should be loving it and supporting it and doing everything we can to tell other people about it because it's cool and it's interesting and it makes people like bowling. This this was kind of like a mini JT Bowl TV rant right there. <laughs> like if you heard JT... <laughs> Go off a little bit every now and then. He, oh, yeah. he tamed it down. He it down a little bit. Uh, I think he had more. He had more to say. Uh, it's because I haven't been on the air for 16 hours already, and having to do 16 hours the next day. True, that's fair. It's uh, <laughs> fair. That's my life currently. Um, but but you're. I think you're right, JT. Obviously, and obviously everyone is entitled to their opinion, and, and you know no one's opinion is wrong from that vantage point. But. For me personally, I got a chance to meet Jim Cripps back when I used to work at the Open Championship. So that was my first introduction uh, to Jim. And, you know, when you first see him, it's like anything else, right? It's a, more of a like a modern marvel in that sense. It's kind of like, well, this is interesting or, you know, and, and does it work? And, and, and how does it work? And, you know, I think for me, I always try to get down to it, right, just from the, the person perspective. And he's a great dude. And so to see him have this success and, and still, you know, really just commit to what he's been doing um, and, and and seeing him do it at, at a national stage. Obviously, the Open Championships is about as national, excuse me, as you can get um, from that regard. I remember, you know, my man, uh, man from Mazzaro introduced me to him and uh, watching him do what he did uh, at the OC. And then seeing, you know, obviously recently, you know, watching all of the shots and, and the cool video and, uh, you know, briefly put together. Well, was great. And, um, you know, I think any we always talk about is is, is bad pub publicity good is and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, here's something that you don't see every day. Uh, and it may have have happened before too. cannot confirm it. Um, and if it has, that's also great, too. But you know, this is the one that we know of and, and the most recent one um, in that sense. So, you know, for all of the, the, the bowlers out there who may do it just a little bit differently, hey, keep doing it. Show me how to do it. I was just commenting. Uh, there was a young uh, Mike Yule. I, I don't know her name, but shout out to Missouri Baptist. You know, Mike with the St. Louis ties, me as well. And I, I thought she threw the best backup ball maybe I've ever seen. I mean, it was, like, honest to God, she was phenomenal. Uh, and that's another example. Well, however you do it, you know, bowling is about repeatability and obviously execution. If you can do those two things in whatever style it is, uh, do it. So more honest score. Shout out to Jim Cripps. Uh, and anyone else that, that may have shot um, a 300 backwards 
boards, sideways, upside down, whatever it is, <laughs> do it. I think the happiest person every time one of these oddities comes up is Josh Blanchard because <laughs> for the longest time, everybody was just playing Blanchard, sliding right. on the lane and falling down on that nasty spill he took on television. Right. And you can laugh at it for so long, but I, I know that that one there is like, Josh would just rather, can you not just maybe <laughs> can we forget mind? that happened? Yeah, please. please. <laughs> well, I think back to Josh Scanlon when he threw it off the, the, the gutter and it went up in his truck and, you know, that's on the USBC um, YouTube channel. It's sitting out there. That's one of the most viewed videos of all time. And of course I have the horrific bowling accident where oh, Troy yeah. Walker hits the rack as well. I, so. I think my favorite thing about the Josh Blanchard one is that he's got such a beautiful style, right? Everything's perfect. He's like the modern day David Ozio. Everything is just perfectly in line. His balance is so fantastic. And then there's this clip of him, you know, looking like Bambi on ice, you know, and which is just so cognitive dissonance, you know, it's just like, that's not Josh Blanchard. Right. Um, but yeah, anyway, plus, plus so, his personality, yeah. he, he's, he, he, he's very proud of the fact that he has a pretty bowling style. So, you know, it, it must just drive him nuts that that clip is all anybody wants to remember. <laughs> yeah. well, they, they raised him right in Upland, California. Shout out, shout out to Upland. That's what I call Josh's hometown. Yeah. Yeah, Josh is doing a great job as a regional director for the PBA tour now. He has just done an absolutely fantastic job out there uh, in the West. I've had a lot of people say a lot of great things about the the work that Josh is doing, giving back to the sport now as he has semi-retired from the PBA tour. Well, guys, that's a lot of great stories, and I'm sure our audience at home has a bunch of other ones that we probably overlooked for sure. But let's look ahead. Let's turn the page. Let's uh, take a moment to talk a little bit about what we have coming up here in 2023. I think we're poised for a, a big one. I know it's kind of cliche, but, you know, with everything being on Bull TV, we're going to have front row seat to it. And so are all the fans at home all on one platform on Bull TV. Uh, JT, I'll go to you. What What are you looking forward to here in 2023? Yeah, I mean, we touched on some of them, right? I mean, is, is Shannon O'Keefe going to be able to be player of the year again? I think that's the, the first question in everybody's mind. How long can she keep this going for? And so, you know, and then which player or players might be the ones to break through and, and kind of, you know, establish themselves as the next dominant player. So that that's one thing to look for on PWBA. Uh, PBA, similar storylines, you know, can Belmo keep it going? Uh, is Simo just going to, you know, he's going to, he won the USBC slam last year. Is he just going to win the grand slam, right? Win every major. I mean, it's possible. Um, but then there's always that group of other players. Like you mentioned, AJ Johnson, uh, Kyle Troop, uh, Marshall Kent. He looked me in the eye and told me he was going to win at least two majors next year. And he's working his tail off to do it. So, you know, it's just going to be fun to watch all that. And it's going to be even more fun because we're going to get to cover it. But then there's all these other stories uh, you know, I don't know if you've read Bowler's Journal this month, but, but you know, the Kevin Williams story is so fantastic. I mean, you know, he broke through and won a title on the PBA tour, but he's also a very talented musician. And, you know, at some point we might lose him to, you know, his music career, but we'll never really lose him because he'll always be a bowler and I'll always support bowling and I love bowling. So I'm curious to see what happens with his music career. And that's not even a bowling story, but there's just so many other stories that, you know, you just don't hear about, you know, we try to cover them in Bowler's Journal. Uh, we do it. We do our best to try to kind of uncover some of those stories that maybe you, you don't hear because they're not the people that you see on Fox and CBS Sports Network or Bowl TV every week. But I just love to hear all of those stories and I'm going to do my best to bring them to you. I know Emil will and Mike will and all the folks that we have on Bowl TV will as well. And I just can't wait to see what stories are out there that we've yet to, to even see. Yeah, well said. Emil, what are you looking forward to next year? You know, I, I think um, obviously having, you know, a bowl TV as a, as the, the place to be, if you will, um, and, and just getting to watch, you know, PBA on a, I guess, you know, a little bit more up close and, and on a regular basis uh, from that vantage point. You know, obviously, you know, from the PWBA perspective, I think both tours, the continued youth movement, um, I think for me, I get a chance, I can get a chance to see it more from the PBA side now. Uh, with it being on bowl TV. Uh, and and I, I'm always looking 
uh, from the youth perspective on the PWBA tour. You know, when I go to collegiate events, which is where I'm at, you know, right now, uh, when I watch the women's division, I, I'm watching for players who I believe have, um, you know, the talent and, and maybe just right now can maybe make that leap and take that next step. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of consciously watching. Uh, and, and the same thing on the men's side. Uh, but now I can kind of combine both because I know I've got one place to just kind of watch for everything in that sense. Um, and I think the youth movement just in general. Right. I think. Uh, you know, the amount of youth tours, youth scholarship tours that are across the country that are producing uh, future professionals at, a, at what I think is a much um, faster rate um, and, and, and com- contributing uh, to some of these future professionals is is phenomenal. Um, and, and the PBA uh, junior and their affiliate program working its way into into that with you know tours in Georgia and Illinois, elite youth tour, um, you know, Wisconsin and all these states. Uh, that that are, are producing and, and and really also giving back, obviously, right to uh, to bowling, to youth bowling specifically, and giving them a platform uh, to perform, to shine, uh, and, and be at their best. So uh, the continued movement uh, and, and improvement of uh, what we see from the youth perspective, and how the youth at the collegiate level will continue to infuse both uh, the PBA and PWBA tours. Yeah, I'm with you on that. We see it at Junior Gold every year. You know, I tell JT every single year when we go and look at, you know, possible, hey, what, what can I do for you guys this year? What can I work? I The first thing I always say to you, JT, is, yep, well, you got me for Junior Gold. I'm in. <laughs> and then what else do you me for? And, and that, those, that, those are probably the most brutal 10 days of live streaming work, Hell. There was one day this year I, I couldn't ring the bell. I couldn't even get up. I was I was I was a, I was a game almost a game late getting there because of the long days, which hasn't happened in my career in a very very long time. But uh, I agree with you, man. The youth is where it's at, and I feel like that that we all need to be there to cover that as well for sure. I think the thing for me, guys, going in into next year is 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 no no time off, and that doesn't mean necessarily from our perspective. Uh, it just, just us working in bowl TV. I mean, it just in general, I mean, there is so much bowling all the time now, whether you get your bowling fix through Instagram now through TikTok, there is more TikTok bowling stuff out there than you've ever seen in your life. And the views over there, because it's so quick and people are watching so many different videos when they sign on to that platform, bowling is being viewed more now than ever. And when I look at the schedule, you know, I think all of us in the industry used to be able to say, well, it's going to be really busy for these couple of months, but then we get to take off a little bit. Even in bowling centers, proprietors out there have always said, well, I got to get ready for my winter leagues. I got to floor my winter leagues and I have my holiday parties and then I got to finish my winter leagues. And then it's summertime and we have less business. So I could take a little bit of time off. I get to go to Bowl Expo, all these things. Well, now the way that bowling has evolved uh, it's it's really more of a just go, 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 go industry. There's always something going on. And when there's always something going on, that means there are people out there talking about it, not only talking about it, but capturing video of it, which we've seen a huge video growth in the last five years in media. And there's just no days off. There's always going to be something on Bull TV. I know we keep talking about it, but there's just something to always watch and see from your favorite athlete, your favorite bowling influencer, your favorite brand in bowling. Man, I just think that that's the big thing for me. And I'm interested to see what the media landscape looks like. It seems like every year there's some new platform or there's some big drastic change. We saw Elon Musk. Yes, I got it in there on this broadcast. He purchased Twitter. Uh, and Twitter is a bit of a mess right now. Um, I can speak firsthand. I have one of my accounts is just totally disabled. It thinks that I'm under 13 years old and I haven't changed the thing. And I've seen a lot of other accounts come up that way. So what if Twitter just disappears, right? How would that change uh, the whole landscape of the world? But how would it change the landscape in bowling? I know that Twitter is not the most uh, watched platform in bowling, but what if Facebook went away for some reason, right? You just never know. That would be very impactful to bowling because there are so many Facebook groups, proprietors use it to tell people about their events. What's going to happen in media this year? And who's going to be the next Darren Tang or Brad and Kyle? Are we going to see Sarah Clawson get to 100,000 subscribers this year? I know with all the viewers we have on this broadcast right here, she just got 30,000 overnight. But, you know, what does the year look like? 
you know, next year from a media uh, perspective and just from an overall impression perspective and how many people are going to view these telecasts They're on TV. So that's it for me. I'm, I just want to know what is this whole world going to look like from a media perspective? How many people are going to be out there bowling? How many more people are going to be involved in bowling? And I like what you said also, Emil, with all these young bowlers that are taking it so serious and they're getting mental training and they're, they're getting bowling balls drilled and, and they're just learning from all these athletes on YouTube or wherever it may be, wherever they consume their content. I think that if I were to buy stock, I would definitely buy stock in bowling. And, and I don't say that all the time, gentlemen. You know, sometimes I'm a little glass half half empty sometimes. But going into this year, I think I think it's I think it's time to buy bowling. I definitely believe that. I agree. Uh, and I might know a little bit why, you know, your Twitter account got disabled because they thought you were under 13. They may have watched some of your PBA 50 coverage and, okay. and got word of that and said, yeah, this, there's no way this guy's over 13. So yeah, let's, let's just disable it. But please don't stop doing that because that's why people love you and they love watching your coverage of these events. But yeah, I mean, you hit on it. It's the youth. It's like, we're old. We talked about that on this show already. Me, you, Emil, other people that are involved. We're old. So let's not mess it up for the young people. Let's give them what they want to see. And that's what we're planning to do. You know, I talk to my kids all the time. My wife goes, what are you doing? We're supposed to be disciplining them. And I'm like, no, we got to talk to them. We got to learn what they want so that we can right. give it to them in the right way. We don't just give it to them indulgently, but we ask them what, we, what they want. And then we put it in place for them to want to be a part of it. And so I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I think you should buy bowling stock and why you should buy a bowl TV subscription, because we're going to give you that. And we want to know how you think we should do a better job of that. And I think that's what's so great about bowl TV and the bowl TV communities, because we listen to them and we give them what they want. And I think that's why Darren Tang is successful. He gives his, community what they want and that's why Packy's so successful he listens to them and he gives them what they want and that's why brad and kyle are successful because he, they listen to their people and they give them what they want and if we just keep doing that then this sport is going to just continue to grow and grow and grow yeah well said emil anything else before we get out of here no i think uh you know, I just saw that uh, my man David Jacoby is leaving ESPN, and one of my favorite podcasts was uh, Jalen and Jacoby. So having said that and what JT just said, uh, to quote uh, their podcast and a great song, got to give the people, yeah, <laughs> give people what they want. That's it, man. That's it. Can't, can't say it any better than that. Uh, and Bull TV is, is here to help you do that. Those of you that bet on who would sing during this show, Emil was not the favorite. Uh, that, was a big, that was a big payday right there. Like if you watch enough PWBA, mine is very subtle. It'll be just random, you know, but I give you about 10, 15 seconds and then I'm out. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, after and set up, he just he'll just break into a you know song. He won't like sing it like full on, but he'll he'll give you the lyrics and like his own little take on it. And he's he's always got a song in his head. Guys, this is this has been fun here today. I hope everybody enjoyed our uh, holiday recap show of 2022, and we hope you all join us on Bull TV in 2023. Want to wish you and your entire family a very merry Christmas, happy New Year as well as happy Hanukkah as well, or whatever uh, it is that you celebrate this time Kwanzaa. of the year. Kwanzaa. So I, I, I'm not a big happy holidays guy. I'd rather just call them all out. So thank you for the assist yeah. there, Emil. Uh, so for JT and for Emil, my name is Mike Flanagan. We will see you in 2023 on Bowl TV and with more sport of bowling shows right here on all USBC platforms. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs>